Hello, my name is David Waltzman and I am the Simulation Product Specialist for GoEngineer. This slide shows the SOLIDWORKS Simulation Product family. As far as finite element analysis, there are three levels. The two items in red come with SOLIDWORKS Premium. There are eight additional studies that come in SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional. Finally, SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium adds another six study types to the list. In this video, I will be introducing the drop test analysis capability in SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional. The drop test is the only study in Simulation Professional that uses an explicit dynamic solver. The act of dropping something on the ground is relatively straightforward to set up as an end user, but in the background, SOLIDWORKS is doing quite a bit to deliver the results. This model here is of a camera, so we have our lens, and our, our two sides to our case. And the goal of this is going to be to drop it on the ground. The ground here is shown by this horizontal plane. So let's go into our first simulation here. You can see if you're familiar with our FEA tools that this study tree is quite short. Um, first step as in all simulations is to make sure that you have your material defined for all of our parts. In this case it carried over from our 3D model. The next is defining contact sets. For this simulation, we're going to say that all of these parts are bonded together. From there, we added one mesh control just in this region here um, for better resolution. And as far as the actual drop test itself, it's all inside of this setup. And so we have two options. We could choose either a height or a velocity. Um, I think it's easy to think in terms of height. We're going to say that we're dropping this camera from two meters off the ground. And again, the ground is being represented by this horizontal plane. So we have normal gravity to let it fall. If we wanted to throw it down, we could increase uh, this value further. Okay. And we're saying that when it makes contact, that there isn't any friction with the ground or any damping, just you know, pretty straight, straightforward here. So running this analysis takes about on my machine on the order of 10 minutes. So looking at the results, we see that there's a maximum stress of around around 450 or so, and it's on that edge that makes contact with the ground when it falls. Since we're not modeling air, nothing is, is spinning here. It's going to hit in the orientation that it's falling from. So again, just to recap, all of our parts are bonded together. There's a linear material model, and the floor is perfectly stiff. In this next study here, I'm going to keep my contact conditions and the material model, but now I'm going to specify that the floor has some flexibility to it. So in our setup, we can see that we're defining stiffness in two directions and a density so that, you know, just like in real life, if something hits, let's say, a block of wood, there's going to be some flex in the wood. So if we look at our results from there, we see that it's increased on the order of 10% from our last study. So it makes a difference whether or not the floor is perfectly rigid. Our third study here keeps the contact conditions and the rigid floor from the first model, but now we're changing the material to behave a little differently. So if you notice, now we have a plasticity von Mises model, meaning that we've defined a tangent modulus. So now our material model is bilinear. Bilinear is more accurate because now we're saying that we're going into a plastic zone and the stiffness of the model is going to be changing. So the results from that are about half the maximum stress as we we're seeing from that first study. So the material model is playing a big role in our, in our stress. Finally, our fourth study here, we are keeping the rigid floor and we're keeping the linear material condition but we are changing the contact between them. So if we go to an exploded view here, 
we're going to say that these two faces that are touching on the case have a no penetration contact, meaning that they're able to come together, separate, slide, they're not glued like in the rest of our simulations. So now if we look at our maximum stress, we see that it's tripled and increased 300 um, percent from our first study. But it's important to realize the location of where that stress occurs. And let's, let's look at an animation of the fall. So SOLIDWORKS is generating the frames right now. And this isn't just an uh, interpolation um, of movement. These are actual calculated time steps from the explicit dynamic solver. So we can see as it's hitting the ground, we have deflection in our parts. This is at an exaggerated scale so that we could see the trend of what's happening. But we see that now the maximum stress is locating at this point where we have a fastener. All right, so these are free to separate now. We do have stress on the bottom, just its magnitude is nowhere near this fastener location now. Hopefully, this has provided some insight into the drop test analysis inside of SOLIDWORKS Simulation Professional. Thank you for watching. This has been David Waltzman with Go Engineer. I hope you enjoyed this video.